Good morning guys, so welcome to Stoke Studio. Uh, today uh, we're going to do something a bit different. I don't do these kinds of things, but I was asked to do a tutorial, so I looked up a few uh, things on how to make a glitter brush. So obviously from yesterday, uh, watching the clipping mask tutorial, uh, this lovely lady asked if I could uh, do a tutorial on how to make a glitter brush. So we're going to try and make a glitter brush. So let's get all this straight into a new document. So there's some cool things you can do with Procreate right now, especially in number five, if you do actually have five. Uh, but the outlay of having to do the brush is kind of different from the four, I believe. So you'll have to bear with me. So best thing to do, if you're going to build uh, certain brush packets or packages, you start from here. Glitter package. Just something you can put in there. Yeah. And then that will obviously be empty. This is going to be your brush library. So like in here, you've got all the brushes for airbrushing, artistic, all the brushes for them. So this one, I obviously want one in here. Now let's say, like for instance, I've been playing around and I didn't like any of these brushes. I can delete the packet like so, which easy enough, but obviously leaves the other ones, yeah? So if you have duplicates of any, I mean, I downloaded this, uh, gentleman's spray painting uh, package but because I, I didn't know how to do it I was doing it two different ways and I put it in twice and then I figured out how to delete one of them but either way glitter pack it is now this area here is for your brushes like I said you would just press there now it was different in the other one we gave you a bit more settings like you add this you add this so this kind of just gives you one to use straight away so probably be better if i do it this way so what you want to do is to you're going to go with these two shape and grain see how they've been put in already what you want to do is actually change these to give you different styles of brushes and this will work for any brush but it's a lot of kind of trial and error and this screen here is going to help a lot because you can see it change without going back and forth drawing it seeing what it looks like so this area here allows you to see the brush in all its glory yeah so you can just edit or clear the drawing pad by doing that okay so shape is your first one I'm going to go to edit import and then source library. Now source library is Procurate's library for it. For some reason, sometimes it doesn't work on mine. It's been a bit of a pain today. Source library, yeah? So there's a grain source and shape source. What you want is shape source for styles. So you can start off with a soft or medium or medium hard brush or hard round brush. That's kind of the general feel I get from some people. Or if you want to try and get a bit crazy straight off, you could try and find something that's kind of dark in the middle and light on the outside. So, I mean, I want to stay within the Procreate kind of ballet because I think this one belongs to a package I bought so you probably won't be able to find that one so oh we'll try this rust yeah so you can see it's dark in the middle light on the outside so when we put the grain inside so you can see what the brush looks like in a second if we can actually draw I'm not going to stroke path ah because I haven't done anything yet that's why okay so we're going to go to the grain. So here, uh, you're going to go edit again, import, source library. Now we're in the grain source. So, uh, I mean, going with something that 
kind of looks close to what sparkles is. I mean, fine hair, you would have to put a lot in there for it to work. Uh, splatters would work pretty well. You just have to change the jitter on it. Uh, let's do, let's see what this bark looks like. It'll be interesting, I suppose. Yes, June. All right, shape. That's what I hadn't done. So when you actually do this and you import source library, let's get that one that I wanted. Make sure you press done. <laughs> and then you'll be able to. That's it. Okay. So now you can see what it looks like and then play around with the settings. So obviously we've got some sort of uh, area here. So you can change this to whatever you wanted to change to. Rotation on. Flip some. Yeah. Uh, randomize, that's always good. Count jitter. Mm, count one, two. Oh, I'll just leave that on one. Uh, stroke puff. So, stroke puff. I want the jitter on a little bit. Turn the streamline on so it gives you better fall off. And you don't want that jitter. That's good. So next one would be grain. So what we're going to do here, depth of jitter, interesting. Brightness, yeah, that, that work for glitter. And multiply blend mode. Put it on linear burn. So, oh, color dodge might be good. So it's kind of giving you an idea of what it will look like when you do these. I think most people do color dodge when they actually do these kind of things. And just try and scale these down a bit. Okay, texture. And dip. That's pretty good. All right, so that's pretty good. Dynamics. Jitter up. Looks better. So it does very passively. Yeah. Size. interesting so really like it's kind of just playing around with a lot of the settings and finding what looks good that kind of thing uh, there's some other kind of areas you can go into that you can double double or brush up there's some very cool things you can do but like I said I mean this is just me kind of Playing around trying to find something close to what glitter looks like, I guess. Yeah, okay. Probably if I do a there we go. Ah, there we go, that's better. I'm undoing my layer. That's not smart. And let's just clear that for now. I get myself a darker gold. Just 
but uh, I mean, yeah, it looks like glitter. Might have to turn the size up a bit, but probably need a, a better brush to use to, if you're doing lettering, I suppose, if you, you probably need a, like a better brush to do the lettering or try and change. Uh, that's good. Size. Blue. Like I said, it's kind of a one of those just got to practice and go through it. I mean, this is one that I did find out that like you can change the cues, saturations. So every time you kind of stroke, change the lightness. I mean, most of the time you just do hue, secondary color. So for instance, if I clear this, and now I stroke, it does different colors instead of just the grog. But that's if you want to kind of change it up a bit. So if you take this all off, it'll fall off back to the normal. But just put your saturation up, hues, and then it should change the different colors for you to use. But that's something you can play around with. But hopefully it's kind of an introduction to brushes. But like I said, I think in this case, I mean, the brush size probably needs to change a bit bigger. But kind of gives the effect of gold dust, you know, or glitter, I suppose. But if you're going to make a brush that's for lettering, then I would probably keep the shape to something that's a bit more... Uh, like the round, I suppose. Like the small, medium, hard or hard brush. It might work a bit better. And then you can, then you can go from here and kind of sketch it. But obviously you got to remember to change the grain and but like I said it's kind of more of a like jitter is one of the big things you need to do to obviously that's more circleish but you turn the taper on I suppose that would work so Let's go to taper. And push your size. Um. Yeah, so Still comes up a bit more circly, but get a general idea of you know you could do something with this. Clear that there. You just need to play around with it. In all honesty, you just go through the motions, find out different particular ones that work for you. Uh, it's kind of trial by error i would say when it comes to brushes you just kind of need to keep going at it and changing it but i mean for what it's worth the this part here is a lifesaver because i believe in the old one you'd have to like go oh, okay i've changed all these what's it look like okay that's not good then go back so this kind of area here is pretty wicked for that kind of stuff so but uh, hopefully it's helpful, uh, especially for the young lady that asked for this tutorial. I mean, 
the only way to describe getting the best thing is uh, you can also, I suppose one of the clever or cheating ways, not, not cheating way, probably more logical way would be to turn this layer into a sparkled effect and use that as the grain that you import. So for instance, my brain is working the way it should do, I mean logically in that respect. Find something that's kind of So uh, this, this is just like spray painting, right? But now to use this as a texture brush. So if I share this as a PNG and just save images to the camera roll. Now if I go into, uh, let's say my glitter pack, go to the brush, choose the grain, edit, import, uh, import file and try and find my I suppose that would be the pain in the butt bit is trying to find the actual file <laughs> import file there we go alright All right. so import a photo so that's the way I obviously saved. That was my fault. Uh, press done. Now change the scale of this. Sorry, moving. There we go. Uh, Scale, zoom, rotation. Okay, I mean that seems decent enough. And change the shape again to the one I had previously. Oh, we'll try this, see what that does. Clear this drawing pad. Yeah. I think that would work. So let's see what that's done here. There we go. My glitter brush. So that's probably another way of doing it is actually just picking a brush, going over the layer and then importing that and using that as the grain. That would probably be a lot easier than trying to find one, I suppose, and playing around with it. So, you know, you could change this, but I mean, for what it's worth, I mean, it kind of looks like gold dust <laughs> or some sort of glitter, I suppose. Let's see. If I... Yeah. Depends what kind of glitters you get. And then you could try changing. Uh, let's see. My fault. Just want it in normal. As a new layer, change the brush. I'm gonna have to get a new iPad because this is wrecking the nibs on. I've already gone through two in the space of I don't know how long. Uh, so you can do this and then just change to what's that color dodge. And then you can 
kind of play around with it, I suppose. And do nothing, different other stuff with it. I mean, the color dodge does different things. You can change it to lighten. Uh, you can see I haven't done a clipping mask here. I've just changed it to color dodge. And it's it's inside the the actual. But you can just line around, color darken, multiply. But worst case in scenario, you could just go to normal. And like I said before, you can just clip this to it. And that gives you your kind of glitter anyway. And then, uh, yeah. So hopefully this was helpful. Uh, it's not really my bag, but hopefully this helps you out. I think the best way of doing it is actually creating your own background texture layer and then importing that into the grain and then using a shape that's already in the Procreate library. And then I suppose glitter works on the premise of, you know, lighter areas. So uh, another good thing to do would be, you know, trying to lighten the middles up, if that makes any sense. So, uh, done. So these areas where it's really needs to be kind of bright, I guess. Kind of put those through there. So it kind of looks more like patches of glitter, you know, because it sparkles. That kind of thing, I suppose. But hopefully it was helpful. Thanks for watching. And uh, always, always happy to do some new tutorial. But conclusion is, I think probably best way to do it is make your own background for your glitter and then import that into the grain and then you can make your own brushes however you want. But if you want me to uh, go through actual brushes or how to create brushes, uh, then just let me know and I'll see what I can do. It's been kind of fun doing this one. I don't know if I'll use the glitter brush that much, but uh, it's definitely something different. I'll give you that much. Thanks again. Bye-bye.